Hey guys, thanks for coming here and listening to another story time with Sean. I really appreciate it. It would be lovely if you guys left a comment or whatever about this after the thing's over. Um, and, you know, liked it and followed me on Twitter and Facebook and all that kind of stuff. Well, regardless of all that, here is the next episode of Story Time with Sean. Story Time with Sean number 7 with Red the Space Trucker. Previously, you've heard about how glamorous or exciting or adventurous space can be. But it isn't always like that. There are pretty normal things that happen out there in the vast universe. People still make food, people still build things, all that kind of stuff. Just like not everyone can be the president, not everyone can be an intergalactic hero of some kind. To negate the cheesiness that has so far been this introduction, all of it is pointing towards you can still have your everyday average badass out there in the universe. Badasses like Red, the space trucker. Yes, trucking is still an important industry in space. How else are the Herboids going to get custom-designed chairs to ease their back pain from sitting on normal chairs? And if you said they could just make the chairs themselves, well, that's ignorant. They don't have arms or hands. Come on! The point is, people have some things made in one solar system, and then they need to sell it in the next one over. This is where dudes like Red step in. They drive space trucks to pick up and drop off goods, just like a regular truck would. Red is a big man who resembles a Viking with a big red beard, hence the name. Duh. He likes to wear flannel, has an axe with him most of the time, and likes to carve things from wood on long voyages. That all sounds pretty cool, which is why I left out that whole part about how he likes to write really bad poems in his spare time. That isn't so cool, but you at least have to respect that he's trying and expressing how he feels. Overall, he just likes space, because he's a rational human, and understands how fucking rad space is. Red always delivers his cargo on time, which is why he's always working. People pay him to do a great job, and he really likes to do it. Rarely, he's requested to carry out very special deliveries, usually dangerous cargo, emergency supply runs, or something like that. Really important things. One of those really important jobs that Red had to go on, he simply refers to as a bear of a job. Which is a hilarious pun and a decent bit of foreshadowing. On that particular job, Red got a special order to pick up secret cargo and make a speedy delivery to Hugulon. These jobs pay really well, and Red likes a bit of danger in his life. So when they tell him not to look in the cargo or ask any questions, he doesn't do either. So, for this job... He just backed up his truck, let some robots load it up, and waited for the traditional exchange of thumbs up and a robot slapping the side of the truck to signal it's all good, and he went on his way. Now, there was a great distance between the pickup and drop-off locations, so once he put the truck into full speed and turned on all sorts of proximity warnings, he went about whittling a really cool figure of Satan, because that's metal as hell, and hail Satan. But before he even got to start with the horns, the alarms began to bleep and klaxon and buzz and all those kinds of noises and be a general annoyance. This typically meant Red needed to pick up the controls and dodge something coming head on at him. Typically this was trash. Because space is so vast and empty, most planets use it as a huge garbage dump. Which is gross, but there's no air in space so at least no one could smell it. However, on this trip, the warnings were coming from behind him meaning it had to be space pirates, which are totally a real issue in space. Red sighed and powered up his shields and guns and got ready for a fight. Instead of opening fire on him, the ship pulled up beside him. The ship was shaped kind of like a giant crab claw, with one wing being much larger than the other. Red's communication screen suddenly turned on, and he saw what was basically a big brain in an even bigger jar. Great craniums, Red muttered. Howdy, boys. What can I do for you? The being projected its thoughts to Red. We've come for your cargo. It is vital to our civilization. Sorry, can't let you have it. It has a destination, and I've got to get it there. Red said while he wondered what the heck he was transporting. Fine, we will take it from you. The brain calmly thought to Red as their ship extended what could only be described as a giant straw, mostly because that's exactly what it was. The straw punctured the truck, and on the screen, the brain began to suck on the other end. Don't ask how a brain in a jar sucked on a straw. It's really gross, and I don't want to describe it in detail. 
Red turned off the screen to hide the aforementioned grossness and went into action. He began firing all the truck's lasers into the claw ship, but the ship had powered down almost everything else and charged up its shields. The lasers had no effect. Red couldn't shoot the ship with any missiles or else the explosion would damage his truck, so he tried to wiggle the truck free. He swerved all over the place and even did a few cool rolls, but the straw deployed a buttload of little hooks. It was really stuck in there. Red needed to break free of them somehow. He didn't want to lose any of this mysterious cargo. He decided he would crash the claw ship into something to break it free. He turned on his scanners to see what was near. This was a long shot, considering how empty space was. It would be a difficult thing even if you were flying through an asteroid belt. You know how far away asteroids are from each other? Like crazy far. Yeah, look it up. But fortune smiled upon him but from really far away because Red found a huge ball of trash and most people didn't choose to get near to the trash unless they really have to. Red directed his truck right at the ball of what appeared to be old fast food wrappers, about 10 kilometers wide. As a bonus bit of good fortune, the craniums were really distracted with their gross sucking that they didn't notice all of this happening. The claw ship smashed into the garbage ball and was destroyed completely. Good riddance. Those guys creep me out. Red said as he put his ship back into top speed and zipped the remaining distance to Hugulon. He landed his truck and was met by a group of three-foot-tall stuffed bears, like the kinds that kids would play with, but alive and all that. They were incredibly adorable, and probably something you would see in a Saturday morning cartoon teaching kids lessons about life. We are the Huggies, and thank the bear god, Ursa Prime, you got here in record time. One particularly soft brown bear said to Red, yeah, just doing my job, he replied. Just sign here and I'll open it up for you. The bear quickly pushed his paw onto the digital pad, leaving a paw print that counted as his signature for some reason, and then Red opened the truck. A lot of Huggies were waiting behind the truck, and when it opened, it showered them in glitter. Sweet fucking Ursa Prime, this is the stuff! One bear shouted. They were going nuts in that stuff. Most of them were snorting it. Don't hog it all, dick sniffers. Papa Bear is coming to town. The huggy that was talking to Red cried out and ran over the pile and dove headfirst into it. Red was really confused, but the delivery was done, and he checked his account, and the money was there. He dumped the rest of the glitter and looked back just in time to see the cute bears getting quite carnal and decided it was a good time to leave. He flipped through his work messages and picked any job that would take him away from all this very quickly. He took off, got into space, and flew away at maximum speed for any other delivery. The end, dog. Thanks, guys, for listening to Storytime with Sean, episode number seven. Uh, it's really cool if you got to this part. Um, like I said before, it would be cool if you guys like left me a comment or talked to me on Twitter or something on the Facebook, saying like a prompt or some sort of space idea thing, sci-fi stuff that you want to see made fun of, or you want to see something in my story, that'd be great. Um, I am always looking for suggestions, or if not, I'll just continue writing what I think is funny and make fun of sci-fi tropes or dumb stories that I make up. Um, I have to thank my friend again, Tika. She <laughs> told me to use glitter in a story, and that gave me the whole idea for the whole adventure that Red had is this. Um, so, yeah, also that, I mean, uh, if you give me an idea, I'll definitely give you guys a shout-out, that kind of thing, whatever, it's not, you know, but, um, uh, thank you guys for listening, um, there may be another one next week, I can't, I don't want to make any promises, I think... The promise that I'm going to make is that this is bi-weekly. I know that I said that last week, and this week there came out another one, but still, they'll be bi-weekly for sure, maybe every week. But if I get busy and I have to do other things, there'll be a break. If you are really into this stuff and you want to know, you can follow me on Twitter. Um, leave them at DarkSmiterD2 there. Uh, and there's a Facebook group, but all those links will be in the description of this, and there'll be, um, annotations throughout the video the whole time, I think. Um, regardless of all that, again, as I said in the intro, thanks for listening. I really appreciate it. Love it if you guys shared it with anybody. You know, if you got a laugh, tell your friends, and maybe they'll have a laugh. Um, 
otherwise, again, thank you for listening, even though I've said it a billion times. Um, and join me next time for the next story that maybe you suggested ideas about. How about that?